Ever found yourself writing repetitive code to fetch models based on route parameters? Or tired of manually resolving IDs in your controllers? Well, you're in for a treat. Welcome to Laravel Champs, where we uncover powerful features that streamline your development workflow. In this episode, we'll explore route model binding in Laravel, a very elegant way to automatically inject model instances in your route, making your code cleaner and more intuitive. So we'll be taking a look at this demo application today where I have a list of posts here and the posts belong to a user and these posts also have tags here. Okay, so I've also made here some links for us because then it's a little bit easier to demonstrate what I want to show you. So let's check out all the users here and I have this little bubble here at the top of some of our pages where we can see the current route parameters. So currently we're under slash users and we see all the users here that also have posts here. And we can also click them here and then we can say, here we are uh, at user slash one, which is showing um, my user with the ID of one. And we can also check out all of my posts and now the URL looks like this. So you get this point and this will be a little bit easier for me to demonstrate what I want to tell you about a route model binding today. Okay, so let's take a look at the code of this. So I have here, um, I'm in my dedicated posts route file and here I have all of my routes here defined. And we're especially looking at these here where we have showing all my users, then I'm showing, um, showing you a specific user, um, the post of a specific user and so on. So let's start with this one here. So I'm pretty sure you already have a little bit of understanding about route model binding, but I'm starting here at the beginning. So this is a placeholder which you can find define when you have a route definition like this. So we're saying here we're expecting a route parameter of users slash and then a placeholder. So this could be anything here. And this I get gets then passed to the controller here. And in this case we're expecting, okay, we're saying this should be an integer because we're expecting an ID. And then what we're doing here, we're trying to get the user with the find or fail method by the specific ID. And then we're passing this to the view. And let's just get back here. So yeah, this is this page here, users slash one, which is currently showing my user. Okay, perfect. And looking at this code, there's nothing really wrong with this code. We're getting the ID, we're finding a user, we're failing if the user is not given, and we're returning a few. But with route model binding, we can yeah make this a little bit simpler. So let me show you. We're going back to our post route file. So, and the way a route model binding is worked, we're using a placeholder, but we're giving it the name of the model that we want it to connect to. So in our case, we want to make sure that the placeholder which we get here or the value that we get here, one in our case, should be matched to the ID of a user model inside the database. And we are telling this by calling this user here. So this is the name of the model. And then inside here, I'm not expecting an integer anymore. I'm already expecting a user instance, a user model, and then we don't need to do find or fail because we are already getting the correct user back with the ID, which we have in the URL. In our example, it was one. And the way this works, um, again, as always in Lao, we'll have some connections here. So this is the name of the user model, as I told you. And here we're just type painting and saying what we get back here is the user and that's how Laravel resolves this and gives us a user instance back. And if we go back here and refresh here, you can see this is still working, but now we're using route model binding, which was pretty easy to set up. Maybe let's also do this here. So here we have the same, instead of the ID, we're saying this should be a user. And then inside my controller, I'm saying this is a user model. This is, this. I'm calling this user. And I don't have to look for the user anymore because we already have it. And if I checking out here all of my posts, you can see this is still working. So this is this route, which now also uses route model binding. And pretty cool, like I already told you, is that told you that um, the level in the back is already resolving this for us. And it also helps us to deal where an ID is not given. So let's take a look at this route parameter here and you can see this is now not found. So Laravel not only resolves the specific instance for us, it also throws a model not found exception if the model was not found 
and will show us this 404 error page. In my case, it's a custom one, which I created for this application. And now let's take also look at this last example here where we first again look for a specific user and then we are looking for a specific post. So, and now we want to make sure that we get here a user instance and then a post instance. Our post, we don't need to find the user anymore and we don't need to find the post anymore. And I think this should be enough to check out now a specific post here, which we now do users one post two, and you can see this is working as well. And again, it's a little bit simpler here. Also what's cool about route model binding, it brings more type safety to your application because we're directly working with objects here where we also have better type hinting and better auto completion here. So this is also what I really like about using route model binding. But what about if you want to change how this looks inside URL? So probably you don't want to show here the ID. So what's really common with blog posts is to show a slug instead. Okay, we can do this too. Let's take a look here. So instead of just typing post here, the model, I can also use colon and then a field of the post table here, which is slug in this case. And then this is being used instead of the ID. So the only thing that we need to change here now is on this view page where I'm going to show the URLs, I need to change this to use the slug instead. So let's refresh this page. And yeah, you can see this is already working down here. And if I now take a look at this page, you can see now this are our route parameters. And now we're using the slug instead of the ID, but we're still using route model binding. Everything inside our controller. Um, this one here still looks very clean and nice, but yeah, we have defined this now on the route that we want to use the slug instead of the ID, which is the default behavior. But it doesn't stop there. There's also something cool which we have, which is about um, enum. So let me show you. So we have this route here where we're showing um, all the posts of a specific tag. And currently the way that this works is we get the tag from the URL, which is a string. And then we have here a static list of all the valid tags that we allow inside our application. And we're checking if it's inside. If not, we are going to abort because again, if we don't control what is being um, inserted here, we still have to do validation in order to make sure that we only allow specific values. Okay, let's also take a look at this now here on our sites. So this is an example here, post, tags, and Laval. And now we get all the posts where Laval is included inside the text. And you can see this is working, but again, this is not so nice and yeah, we can do better. All right, so how are we going to deal with this? So currently we're using tag just as placeholder and inside our controller, we say that this is a string. But what we can also do is here, we can say that this should be a post tag. And we take a look at this class. This is just a backed enum here for post tag. And here I have my values, which I allow, which of course is way better than just having this inside my controller. So what this means now, we can get rid of all of this here. Bum, 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 bum. It also works that we can just provide here the tag, even though it's an enum and not a string, you can see that it still works. Let's refresh this and you can see, yeah, this is still working. And yeah, this is pretty cool. So this means you can also use route model binding, or in this case, it's route enum binding, I guess. But yeah, um, I'm a big fan of enums, so that's why I really love this feature for route binding as well. Okay, cool. So far, so good. Two more things that I want to show you. Let's go back here and let's take a look at this last one here. So if we take a look at our posts table inside the database, there is also a title which I have called trashed with um, where we have this luck. I see it's just trash. So let's try to take a look at this one. So I'm going to back to all users. I know it's a post of mine. And now inside here, let's take a look at a specific one. Now inside here, I'm changing the slug to trash, hmm. but we get four or four back. So Laval didn't find this post. So why is that the case? So if I take a look again here at this value here, 
we also have a deleted at column. So this means we're using soft deletes here for my post model. And this is a model which was deleted. That's why we have here this timestamp. And Laravel by default does not include those trashed models. But we can change this here by using, um, let's clean this up here a little bit, by using the with trashed method. Let's take a look again. And you can see now um, it has already been refreshed here. And I see this post, even though it's trashed, I also put it in the title just to be sure that we really get that this is a deleted post. And yeah, it's still working. So this is also a very handy method. If you want to make sure that those models are also allowed, you have to use the with trashed method. Okay, cool. Um, one more thing, which I think is also pretty good to know is if we don't use a specific um, field here as the slug as for our ID and just use the default behavior, there's something that you might not know. So let's go back here. Um, let's go back to all the users and let's take a look at one of Taylor posts. Mm -mm. Let's take this one here. And of course we need to change this here in the view. Change this back to the ID so the links use the correct link. So let's go back here. So I'm interested here in one of Taylor posts. So we have the post with the ID 13, which belongs to Taylor. So this means if I go back here now to my posts, show all of my posts, the one from Taylor is not inside here. But if I now use 13, which was the ID of the post by Taylor, you can see that this somehow is still working. And it also shows that I'm now the author of this post, which is a little bit odd when you think about it. And the reason for this is, let's go back to our routes definition, is that by default, if you just use two placeholders, two models like this, this is not by default already scoping the posts to the user. This only happens by default if we also use a specific key like slug here. But we can still make this work with a method called scope binding. So this means we're scoping the post to the placeholder model placeholder, which we had before. And if I go back here now to this page, you can see now I get a 404 because now level tries to find this specific post connected to my user, which is not given and that's why it's failing. So scope bindings is pretty cool. It also works the other way around. If you use the slug here, for example, of this, you can also use without scope binding. And this would be the other way around. So yeah, no matter which way you like it, you can define it, but just something that you have to be aware of. If you just use it like this, it will give you any post, no matter which user you have set here first. Okay, there's really just one more thing that I'd like to show you. So far, we only talked about implicit route model binding. So where level does all the work for us and it's just guessing about what models we are using by using the model names here and so on. We also talked about enum binding, but yet yeah, there is also explicit binding. And there are two ways that this works. First, inside an service provider, like an app service provider. Let's go um, down here. I have a few examples, which I like to show you. Like I've said, we also have explicit route model binding. And this is where we now define for the model. If someone uses the string post as a placeholder in the route definition, this should be connected to the post class. By default, this is also working like this, but um, you could have any different model here and it would still work just providing the placeholder with the name post. So if you want to define this for yourself, if your naming conventions are different, um, you can do it like this. Also here, another example, where if you want to be a little bit more explicit at how this works, you have some custom resolutions where you're using a route to bind and then you're saying for the placeholder post being used, this is how it should work. And here I'm just checking where a specific post for a specific slug and then use first and fail. So very similar to how Laravel does it as well. And you can go even a little bit crazy. Here with this last example where I just have any additional constraints condition that you want to set. You are very free to use whatever you want here. For example, I've added here another where clause. So this is something that you can do as well. So this is one way to do this inside your service provider. Another way to do this is on the post model. So where do we have this here? So first, um, you can also define here the key which is being used by default. 
So if you want to use the slug by default for this model, you can define it here with the get route key name, and then you don't have to define this inside your route. So um, let's go back here. So you don't would need to define this here because then by default, it would use the slug instead of the ID, which is also very powerful. And then the second thing, which I've showed you the custom resolution, you can do this also here directly by defining here this where clause directly on the model itself instead of using the app service provider. And again, you can also be very creative here about how you want to look for your model. So this is also working. Okay, but this is basically everything that you need to know about route model binding. You have implicit route model binding, you have explicit route model binding where you define how it should work. Um, it works with enums as well. We have some little helper methods with with trash, with scoping, with outscoping, and so on. But yeah, route model binding is just so cool in Laravel. And there you have it. Route model binding is a powerful jam in the Laravel ecosystem. I hope this helps you to write cleaner and more efficient code by reducing boilerplate and enhance readability. What Laravel features should we explore next? Share your suggestions in the comments below. And don't forget to subscribe and like for more Laravel jams. Until the next time, happy coding.